Great, okay. So sorry for a little bit delay. So let me repeat. Uh, we are having the due date on the quiz seven on Monday and I'll set up a quiz seven so you can fill out. Uh, it's gonna be upload, okay? It's gonna be upload file. Uh, so you have to write up your solutions and just upload it to it. If you don't have the time to write down, you can just write a number on it. As I said, if you just write a number on it, it's very hard to tell me uh, if you did the work or not. So if you made a mistake there, I just cannot give you the points if you do that way, okay? So that's the quiz. And the homework on share will be sent out today. I'll upload on Canvas shortly. And you see that's only two problems. Uh, first problem has three, three sections and second problem is a structure problem you designed for different shear spacings, okay? So fairly straightforward, not difficult at all and also reduce the amount because you already done the quiz on it, okay? All right, so let's come back to the uh, one we slap. Let me share screen, hold on one second. Okay, this is where we add shear, okay. All right, okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. And uh, we talked about last time, the spacing requirement for the reinforcement for flexure, okay? So there's a confusion. Uh, I got people asking me a question, okay, so Bobby, we're talking about shear design. So when we come back to slab, that's the shear, no. Uh, for slab, it's still the flexure, okay? Still the flexure, okay? Now we talked about when we slab last time, remember? When we slab, continue. Okay, and the main reinforcement we need for the one-way slab recall is first is the flexure reinforcement. And second one is the cracking, okay? Cracking reinforcement, or you call it temperature and shrinkage. Temperature and shrinkage. Okay, so these are the two main reinforcement that we need to consider. We need to consider. And also the reinforcement directions are differently, right? So the flexure is along the span direction. So let's just you use red color. So this is along span direction. And the temperature is along transverse direction, along transverse direction. Okay, so there are different directions. There are different directions. Okay, all right. So we talk about how we determine the reinforcement for the slab just in terms of a conversion because, uh, go back to blue. Because when we design the slab, it's per unit strip. So per unit strip design for slab. So this requires us that the spacing needed, the spacing needed, right? Uh, or you can call it AS per foot, AS per foot, equal to the area of a bar you provided, must be by 12 inch per spacing of the bar. So this is spacing of the bar. Okay, now on the job side, on the job side, we don't usually ask you guys to provide the steel, okay? Uh, at the job site, we were often required to give a design spacing for the given bar size, for given bar size, okay? In other words, the bar we can use are limited. The bar we can use are limited. So in other words, we'll not use this equation that often. Instead, we use the spacing equation very often. That is the required spacing has to be smaller or equal than A, B, bar area multiplied by 12, okay? And divided by the required, required AS per foot, okay? So you may ask the question, what is this required AS per foot? What is this required AS per foot? And that is for us to find out in terms of flexural capacity, flexural capacity. Okay, but on top of this, on top of this, ACI also have other constraints. ACI also have other constraints, okay? So following other constraints that need to be applied. So ACI code 
7.7.2.3 basically says that the maximum spacing, we use blue, so it's not calculation. So maximum spacing has to be constrained as lesser of, lesser of three times of the flange height or thickness or 18 inches. Okay, and that's called a deflection control spacing requirement. So this is called deflection controlled spacing requirements, so spacing requirement. It means you need to provide spacing less than this so your slab won't sag, your slab won't sag. Okay, so that's one requirement need to remember. And the second requirement need to remember, second requirement need to remember is the crack controlled, crack controlled, crack controlled spacing. That means you need to provide enough bars or small spacings that does not allow major crack. And this is a little bit lengthy, okay? This is a little bit lengthy. So that is lesser of, lesser of two, okay? The first equation is 15, okay? 40,000 divided by Fs, okay? Fs is the service stress that will, talk about it, okay? Service stress. And FS usually, FS usually could do two thirds of the yield strength, two thirds of yield strength of the bar, okay? And then you have minus 2.5 CC, okay? CC, and CC is the concrete clear cover. Concrete clear cover. Okay, and this you can find from ACI table, ACI table 2.4.3.2. Okay, so this lesser, right? So this is the first one. And the second one is 12 multiply 40,000 divided by FS. 40,000 divided by FS. Okay, so that's the second spacing requirement, second spacing requirement. Okay, now, since you have so many requirements, right? You have so many requirements, you have the calculated spacing requirements, okay? And you have this lesser of the two for deflection control, you have the spacing requirement for the spacing requirement for the crack control, right? So the list is a bit long. The list is a little bit long. Okay, so what we need to do is, what we need to do is summarize them all, summarize them all. So the flexure reinforcement spacing, so let me write down in terms of flexure. So this is called the flexure spacing requirement, okay, equal to the least of, least of, right? So I sum all these up, sum all these up, basically write all these equations down. So this is AB multiplied by 12 divided by required spacing, and this is AS divided by per foot. And this is three times HF. This is 18 inches, okay? And now I have 15, 40,000 divided by FS, then minus 2.5 CC. And then I have 12, 40,000 divided by FS, okay? So naturally these are deflection controlled deflection controlled spacing requirement. These are crack controlled. Okay. Now on top of all these, okay, this is spacing requirement, okay? On top of all these, even if you satisfy all these spacing requirements, okay, all these spacing requirements, you still have to check your minimum reinforcement. You still have to check your minimum reinforcement. That is AV min. Okay, that is A V means or now V V means shear. So A S mean A S mean equal to a 0 0.002 B H F B H F. Okay, in this case B equal to one foot because a unit strip. Unit strip. Okay, so you have to make sure that your A S A S per foot that you calculated has to be bigger than AS mean required. And you can find this one from code ACI R, okay, 10.5.4, okay, 
is this in the comments? Okay. All right. So this is all you need to know for flexure. All you need to know for flexure. Okay. So it's a little bit lengthy. This is lengthy. So you need to determine the spacing for flexure reinforcement, and you also need to determine the minimum among the reinforcement area. Minimum among the reinforcement area. Okay. Now, how about for temperature and shrinkage? How about for temperature and shrinkage, right? So the second thing, so if this is to say, and I just want to add this one, this is for flexure. Again, flexure reinforcement spacing requirement. Okay, and then second is for temperature, temperature and shrinkage. All right, so it's a little bit confusing, right? Is that, you know, we have flexure reinforcement and you have shrinkage and temperature, right? So this seems to be overlapping. So do I count the shrinkage temperature as a flexure reinforcement or do I take the flexure reinforcement as part of shrinkage and temperature reinforcement? The answer is no, they're in a different direction. They're in a different direction. How so? Now let me draw you the illustration, right? Draw you the illustration. So assume this is the slab. Assume this is a slab, one way. And let me label it, right? So it's one way, so let's call it L1. This is the bending direction, major axis, okay? And there's another direction called L2, remember? And that's the transverse direction, transverse direction. So I'm gonna use different colors, show you where the, where the reinforcement is at. These different colors show you where the reinforcement is at. Okay, so the flexure, let's use blue, let's use blue. So the flexure reinforcement, okay, they are along the L1 direction. They are along the L1 direction, okay. Can you see it? So they're like that, like that, okay. However, the shrinkage and temperature, shrinkage temperature, they are along the other direction, L2 direction, L2 direction. Okay, so they're different. So the red one, this is a shrinkage. Shrinkage, ah, sorry, shrinkage and temperature. And the blue one is the flexure. Okay, they're in a different direction. Then they're in a different direction. So in this section, we're talking about shrinkage and temperature shrinkage of temperature, okay? Now, for the shrinkage of temperature, the reinforcement provided is a little bit different. Shrinkage temperature reinforcement provided is a bit different, okay? So the AS mean for shrinkage of temperature, so AS mean, now let me just write down here, shrinkage and temperature, okay? Is, is the least, uh, the largest, okay, the largest, be careful now, so we're talking about area now, okay? This is area, now spacing, okay? The largest of, largest of, okay, following. So 0 0.002 AG, which I'll explain to you what is AG, okay? And this is for FY, okay? Yield strength is equal to or smaller than 40 or 50 KSI. Okay, and equal to 0 0.018 AG for FY equal to a 60 KSI, 60 KSI. Okay, and that also equal to 0 point, sorry, 0 0.018, 0 0.020 in front of, okay, 0 0.018 AG, Sorry, this is not AG anymore. This is bigger than 60 K. So 60,000 PSI divided by FY. Be careful, this is not FS anymore. FY multiplied by AG is a discount, okay? And this number has to ensure that is bigger than, bigger than 0.0014 AG. And this is for yield strength larger than 60. 
KSI. So larger than 60 KSI. Okay. All right. So it's quite lengthy requirement, but this is temperature and shrinkage. So you don't get to calculate. So that's the easy part. You just have to remember equations, right? Just have to remember these equations. Okay. Now for the AG, now this is area of the cross section, right? Area of the cross section equal to B multiplied by HF, B multiplied by HF again, and this B, B is one foot. B is one foot. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is as much detail for the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement. Detail for the temperature and shrinkage reinforcement. Okay, all right, so let's run through one example, right? Let's run through one example to show you how we design for it, okay? How we design for it. So it's a pretty long process, pretty long process, okay? So I have a beam. Let me write down here a little bit more. So example, design one way, design one way slab as shown. And then I have a simply supported one-way slab, okay? And the applied distributed load, applied distributed load is omega u equal to 315 pound per square foot. Okay, it's not kips anymore, pound per square foot. Okay, this is given, this is given. All right, and I have a F prime C, which is a concrete, it's a 4 KSI concrete, very easy. And yield strength, a little bit low, 40 KSI. Yield strength for the bar, for the slab, is pretty low, 40 KSI. Okay, so I want to design my slab. I want to design my slab, okay? So this is a little bit abstract. This is a little abstract. So I want to show in the 3D view, right? Essentially, this is my one-way slab, looks like this, okay? And this is the support. Put a roller here so you know it's a support. And this is support. Okay. And this is L1 direction where I need to do my bending or flexure reinforcement. This is L2 direction where I do my transverse direction. Sorry, transverse reinforcement. Okay. Now, first thing to do is to find the thickness of the slab. Right? So first thing to do is to find the thickness of the slab. Let me, let me move it here, okay? And this you can actually find from the code. So code ACI 9.3.1 tells you that the thickness of the slab has to be equal to a, there's a given equation L1 divided by 20, okay? L1 the span length divided by 20 multiply 0 0.4 plus Fy divided by one zero 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 five zero ten thousand okay five zero ten thousand okay so this is just an equation just an equation you need to remember it how we determine the height of the slab okay so I plug the number in plug the number in I say L1 what is the span length oh it's not given sorry so about 10 feet let me just say that it's about 10 feet a fairly short slab 10 feet so bring the equation, so 10 feet multiplied by 12 convert into inches. And by the way, this is in inches divided by 20 because I want to convert everything back to inches to HF, right? And 0 0.4 plus this is 40 KSI, so 40,000 divided by 10,000, right? Divided by 100,000, so triple three, triple three cancel. So about 40%, so I got 0.8. So this is six multiplied by 0.8. I got a 4.8 inch. 4.8 inch. Okay, so from the equation, it tells me that I need to have 4.8 inch. Okay, so from the code required, so HF has to be bigger and equal than 4.8 inch. So let me set my HF equal to 5 inch. A little bit thicker. Thicker is always better in terms of safety. Okay, thicker is always better in terms of safety. All right, just round up a whole number, round up a whole number. Okay, now this is my height, right? This is my height. So no longer this is unknown. Now HF is 
five inch. All right. Now, when I design for it, I always want to look at the flexure first. I always want to look at the flexure first. Okay. So what is the flexure, right? Flexure loading requires I'm designing a section for this section, right? Remember, this is the section. So I zoom in here to show it, and this is my core section. I have a foot, which is unit length, unit slab, and I have a bar right here. I don't know what it is yet, but let's just label AS. And I need to find my distance between the top and the bar. So depth of the beam, depth of the slab. Okay, what is that? What is that? All right, so in this case, let me assume, I say assume concrete cover, assume concrete cover is 0.75 inch. Okay, so that is the clear cover is 0.75 inch. Okay, and my height is five inch. So the depths, the depths D equal to the height HF minus the concrete clear cover and minus half of the bar size, half, half of the bar size. Okay, so I don't know the half of the bar size. I don't know the bar, right? So I'm just gonna assume, I'm gonna assume number four bar in this lab. You say, wait, wait, wait a minute, Bob. The bar is much smaller than number nine. We usually for beams, yes. Because this is a slab, we don't have a whole lot of room there. You can see the height of the whole thing is only five inch. It's almost quarter of the beam, right? So we don't have a whole lot of room, so we use smaller bars. And yet explain the reason why FY equals 40 KSI, because it's very small, right? So for number four bars, the DB equal to 0.5 inch, half inch. So with that, the D depth equal to five minus 0.75 minus 0 0.5 divided by two, what I get, I got four inch as a depth. Got a four inch as a depth. Okay, so you say, I just don't feel comfortable with number four or you can use number three, right? You can use number three. So let me just write down here for slab. Okay, flexural reinforcement usually right, usually takes number three or number four, either one, number three or number four, either one, okay? So at this point, my geometry is set. At this point, my geometry is set. So I can say my HF equal to five inch, depth equal to four inch, okay? And I use number four bar. So this is my geometry. Now I can start calculating. I can start calculating, all right? So I made it easy already, okay? We didn't have to calculate the self-weight and everything. So omega U already is 315 pounds per square foot. That is given, right? So first thing first is a simply supported beam. Guys, a simply supported beam, right? So I need to find a moment, okay? So to find moment MU simply equal to omega U, uh, one square divided by eight. All right, to save you the trouble, this is 0 0.315 kips per square foot. Convert it back to kips per square foot. And this is 10 feet squared divided by eight, divided by eight. And I got this number to be 3.94 kip feet, kip feet per foot, per foot. So where did the per foot come from, right? Where did the per foot come from? Because this is only one line, one unit strip. This is per foot, okay? One unit strip. So I have actually a per foot here, right? So when we ask you to calculate the moment for this one-way slab, it always carry a unit of kip foot per foot. Every semester, every semester, second exam, I always give a question asking what is the moment for one way slab per unit strip. And I always ask you guys to put unit on it. And I always see 40% of students on average forgot to put per foot. And I have always taken four points out of it. Okay, and out of four, all right? So it's pretty crucial that you remember a unit for the moment for the one-way slab is kip foot per foot, kip foot per foot.
Okay, so with this, I know the apply moment to the strip. So things become a little bit easier now, right? A little easier now. So MU, which is apply moment, has to be smaller than or equal to phi mm. Okay, and at this point, I assume phi equal to 0.9, so it's tension controlled. I assume tension control. So AS, which is steel, equal to MU divided by phi. And Fy, which is yield stress of the bar, multiplied by D divided by half A, D minus half A. Okay, D minus half A. Now, challenge. We don't know A. We don't know A. So we need a guess, right? We need a guess. So for this, we're just going to guess, right? This equal to JD, and that approximately equal to 0.95D. Okay, this is very critical. You need to remember this. This is for one way slab. One way slab only. Okay. 95% of the depths. Okay, one way slab only. Okay. So with that assumption, I go in to plug the number. So this is 3.94 kip foot per foot. All right. And multiply 12 inch per foot. Okay. Convert it back to inch, right? Inch. And sorry, convert it back to uh, uh, kip, uh, pound inch, right? Pound, eight, no pound, just inch. Convert back to inch. And bottom here, 0 0.9, the strength reduction factor, yield strength 40 KSI, and multiply 0 0.95, multiply depth, which is D, and that is four inch. Okay, and I leave the unit outside so I can cancel later. This is KSI, multiply inches at the bottom. So plug the number in, I got 0 0.346, 0 0.346 inch square per foot. Pay attention, okay? Inch square per foot. Okay, inch square per foot. All right, so this is required reinforcement. So let me just rewrite here. AS required basically from the calculation is 0 0.346 inch square per foot got from the applied loading, right? So at this point, before I go on, I say, okay, look, let me confirm the A, because here I assumed A, I assumed the lever arm, right? The lever arm. So I say, let's confirm the compressive zone A, right? So A equal to ASFY, okay, divided by 0 0.85 F prime C B, which is the width of the strip. And remember this is 12 inch because it's unit strip. So on the top 0, 0346 inch squared per foot, multiplied by 40 KSI and divided by 0 0.85 and F prime C is four KSI and multiplied by 12 inch, 12 inch. So I got this number A equal to 0 0.339 inch. Don't forget still per foot. I carry the unit with me, okay? Carry the unit with me, okay? So at this point, I say, now I have the estimated A compressor zone. So let's recalculate AS. Recalculate AS, okay? So now, since A equal to that, so AS has to be bigger and equal than MU divided by phi of Y D minus half A. Typical Fletcher design, we've done this before in singular reinforced section. But anyway, so this is 3.94 kips foot per foot. All right, don't forget a unit and multiply 12 inch per foot divided by 0 0.9. And Fy now is 40 KSI. And D at depth is four inch minus 0 0.339 inch per foot divided by two, okay? So there's a mismatch unit, but just hold your thought on that, okay? So you got AS has a bigger than 0 0.343 inch squared per foot. Okay, so let me say this, there's a mismatch of unit, right? Unit mismatch. Why is that? Because this four, four inch is supposed to be four inch per foot as well, okay? That's the depth per foot, okay? Everything is per foot. All right, so now this is the required required AS, AS per foot, okay? All right, we're gonna do what? We're going to select the bar. So select number four, as we said, number four bar, okay? And 
before I do that, right, this is AS required, right? AS per foot required. Let me just put down here, okay? So I need to find area of bars, right? For number four bar AB equal to 0.2 inch squared. And this is for number four bar. I'm gonna use the previous equation to calculate the spacing. So the spacing is less or equal than AB must by 12 divided by AS and per foot, right? And that is 0 0.2 multiplied by 12 divided by 0 0.343. And I got a 7.06 inch. So this is the calculated required spacing, calculated required spacing, okay? And I'm not, I'm not done yet. This is a provide bar, right? This is a provide bar. So now finally I can say, right, I can design the bar. So I'm going to use number four bar use number four bar at six inch. Okay, this is my design. So that my provided reinforcement, okay, provided reinforcement, okay, equal to 0 0.2 multiplied by 12, okay, divided by six inch. That's the spacing right here, okay. 0 0.2 is AB, 12 is conversion factor. So this is 0 0.4 inch square per foot. Okay, this is really what I put in. This is really what I put in. Okay, now I look back my section. I look back my section and my section becomes like this. So this is 12 inch per unit strip. Fine, I have a bar here, which is number four. And how many bars I put in? How many bars I put in? I put one bar, okay? One bar, okay? But this is not a bar area. This is equivalent reinforcement area after I do the conversion, right? Per unit strip, right? And I have a four inch right here. Just give you a sense of reality, right? four inch right here and five inch total, okay? So now my section is set, my section is set. I need to go back. So go back to confirm, confirm yield, okay? And also confirm tension control, confirm tension control, okay? So A would equal to ASFY, okay? Divided by 0 0.85 F prime C B, Okay, and that equal to 0 0.4 inch squared per foot. Okay, and multiply by 40 KSI, just you know, copy the number down here and divide by 0 0.85, 0 0.85 F prime C is 4 KSI, okay, and 12 inches, 12 inches. Okay, so I recompute my A and my A is equal to 0 0.392 inches. All right, so this is the effective compressive zone, okay? But I want to get my yielding strain. So I need to compute my C, which is actual compressive zone. So A divided by B to one, you should know this very well by now, is 0.46 inch, okay? And B to one equal to 0.85, because it's four KSI concrete, four KSI concrete. So epsilon T, because I only have one layer bar, equal to epsilon S and equal to a D minus C divided by C multiplied by epsilon CU. And that is four minus 0 0.46 divided by 0 0.46 multiplied by 0 0.003. Okay, save the trouble. Now so much game, today is too much content. And then I get the strain to be at epsilon T equal to a 0 0.03. All right, and this number is much larger than 0 0.00207. So not only a yield, not only a yield, which is good, but also tension controlled, right? Because this number is bigger than 0 0.005, bigger than 0 0.005. Oops, so such a long way, right? Such a long way, okay? Now we have finally arrived at our moment capacity and arrived the moment capacity. So MN, the moment capacity now equal to ASFY, ASFY D minus half A, D minus half A, and that is 5.1 kips foot per foot. Don't forget the unit. Don't forget the unit. And then VMN reduction is 0.9 multiplied by Mn, which is 5.1, equal to a 4.56 kips foot per foot. And this number is bigger than Mu, which is 3.94 kips per foot, right? Kip foot per foot. So we're okay. 
Oops. All right. So we're okay. So finally, finally, the longitudinal reinforcement is okay. Longitudinal reinforcement is okay. All right. But is it done yet? Is it done yet? Not yet. Not yet. Still some way to go. Okay. You just provided the reinforcement and make sure that the moment capacity is covered. All moment, moment capacity is covered. How about other requirement? How about other requirements? So check, check, right? First thing, check AS min, the minimum reinforcement, is it enough? So AS min equal to 0 0.002 AG in this way, I just write it out, BHF, okay? So that is 0 0.002 multiplied by 12 inch, uh, multiplied by five inch, okay? And I got this to be a 0 0.12 inch squared per foot. Okay, 0 0.12 inch square per foot. So the provided though, the provided reinforcement equal to 0 0.4 inch square per foot. Okay, so this is larger than the minimum requirement, which is this value right here. So we're okay. Okay, we're okay. But this is only one check. How about maximum spacing requirement less than previous, right, previously? Okay, so the maximum spacing, remember, is equal to the least of, least of all these, right? First has to be what? Have to be, have to be 3HF or 18 inches, okay? Or 15 multiplied by 40,000 divided by FS, okay? Minus 2.5 CC, start getting a little bit crappy, I'm sorry, 2.5 cc concrete cover and 12 and 40,000 divided by FS. 40,000 divided by FS, okay? So let's plug in the number, right? This is 15 inches because the height is five inch. Now in this equation, this is 15 and 40,000 divided by FS, that is basically two third because FS equal to two thirds of 40,000, FY is 40,000, right? And minus 2.5 multiplied by 0 0.75, I have this number to be 20.6 inch, pretty big. And the last one is 18 inches because this is again, two thirds of 40,000. All right, so which one is the least? Which one is the least? So naturally the 15 inches. Governs. Okay, 15 inch governs. All right, so what we have, right? We have S equal to provided 60 inch, which is much less than the maximum requirement, which is 15 inches. Hence, we're okay. Hence, we're okay. All right, so after all these checks, now we can say, look, flexure reinforcement, flexure reinforcement determined. Ray, right, finally determined. And this number is number four bars at six inch spacing, okay? And convert it back to the reinforcement area per foot, that is 0.4 inch squared per foot. Okay? All right, so this is the flexure reinforcement, flexure reinforcement. Okay, now how about temperature and shrinkage? How about temperature and shrinkage, right? So we go back to see the previous requirement for temperature shrinkage, and we say determine temperature and shrinkage reinforcement, we just simply use that requirement from ACI code. And that is temperature and shrinkage reinforcement is AS min, AS min, the minimum number is 0 0.002 BHF, okay? And that is 0 0.002 B always in one way slap, one inch, sorry, one foot, right? 12 inch, HF is five inch. So I got this number to be a 0 0.012 inch squared per foot, inch squared per foot, inch squared per foot. Okay, so what is the spacing requirement? What is the spacing requirement? I simply pick the spacing requirement for this one because I calculated and this is for one way and it surely apply for the other way. 
the other way. Okay, so I say that okay, 18 inch is the 18 inch is the requirement. So what is the spacing I can provide? So 15 inch is the requirement. So what is spacing I can provide? I would just say, look, I'm gonna be easy, right? So I say AS min equal to 0.1, sorry, 0 0.0112 inch square per foot. So I will go with number four bar at 15 inch. Go with number four bar at 15 inch. But I need to check, this is provided, this is provided. So AS provided equal to 0 0.2, that's AB. Don't forget this is AB. Bar area multiplied by 12 inch, right? And divided by 15 inch, right? 12 is the one unit strip, right? And the 15 is the spacing I provided, spacing I provided. So this is four, this is five. So 0.8, this is 0 0.16 inch squared per foot. And this number is much bigger than 0 0.0112 in, oops, inch square per foot, which is AS mean. Okay. All right. So with that, you know, happy campers. I think this checked out. Now I can say I have a slab. Have a slab. So one one way slab, but uh, sorry, let me use black color, okay? You can use different color you want, but for me, I just want to stick black color for concrete slab here, okay? And then dash inside edges, okay? And the flexure reinforcement go this way, go this way, and we say these flexure are number four bars at six inch. Number four bar at six inch. And the temperature and transverse reinforcement going this way, and we say this is number four bar at 15 inch. Okay, so just the name, this is temperature plus shrinkage, SHR shrinkage, and this is flexure. All right, so that's how it's done, okay, for one-way slab. All right, sorry folks, a little bit long, but uh, this is what it takes to get one-way slab, okay? So I'm gonna stop for a moment here. Any questions on this, on the proce procedure, how to design it? Any yeah, other Bob, questions? I, yeah, I Mike. Question. Uh, when we select the bars up top, mm -hmm. so we said that AS, AS required was to be 0 0.3, 0 0.343, mm -hmm. up, right, up, stop, down, down. Mm -hmm. And then we just said our, we just said, since we already knew we we're gonna use number four bars, yeah, we just used dope, both those, just plug into that S equation. Is that all yes. we did there? Yes. Okay, I didn't know that, I didn't, I didn't know if, since we had a required AS of 0 0.343, if we had to have a AB greater than that, but, uh, no, this yeah. is the conversion basically. Okay. AB is just a bar area. You need to convert AB to a number that can be compared with this. So in the sense is that we directly plug this in to get a spacing instead. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Right, because I mean, essentially you're providing a bar in 12 inches, right? But you need to calculate what is the area per foot. Right, so if you use different spacing, you have to take that into the consideration to get equivalent area per foot. I understand now. Thank right, you, Bob. Right, right. Sure, no problem. Any other questions, guys? It's a very good question. Any other questions? Are we good on this? Okay. Um, it takes a little bit to digest, I think, and we'll not have homework on slab today. We'll have on the shear. On Monday, we'll finish one-way slab and we'll release a one-way slab homework on Monday, okay? So they'll give you a little bit of time to digest on this part, okay? It's a little bit tricky to do the one-way slab. It's pretty uh, tedious, but often time, easily mistaken, easily mistaken, okay? So I hope you can spend some time on it, all right? I think this is a good point for me to stop. You're welcome to stay behind if you have any questions about this.
or if you have any other questions about homework and gradings. And mid semester grade, I try to upload it as soon as I can, but you can start calculating now based on the syllabus weight percentage and see where you're at and how much you have to improve. Okay. All right. So let me stop recording and I can stay behind a little bit for anyone who have questions. All right. Thanks a lot.